This is class 24 of my arithmetic course. In the last class, we learned the order of operations agreement, and we applied that agreement to geometric formulas. In this class, we're going to learn additional applications of the order of operations agreement, specifically simple interest and percent change. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. We're going to start by learning the principle of interest. If you haven't learned interest yet, let's talk about the general concept. Now let's say you put some money in your bank. Banks will typically give you a savings account and a checking account. If you put your money in a savings account, the bank will invest that money and they'll share some of the profits with you. But if you put your money in a checking account, the bank will not invest the money. Checking accounts are just safe places for people to put their money where you can access the money at all times. Now let's say you put $100 in your savings account and the account pays 1% simple interest per year. So if you have $100 in the savings account for one year, the bank will pay you $1. So the total amount of money that you'll have in the account after one year will be the original $100 that you put in plus $1. So a total of $101. So that's simple interest. There are other types of interest. Uh, one of the most common types of interest is compound interest. But the calculations required for compound interest are, are much too sophisticated for this course. You'll learn compound interest when you take uh, pre-calculus or intermediate algebra, depending on the curriculum. It's also important to understand that when you give your money to, uh, or when you put your money in a savings account at a bank, you're actually loaning your money to the bank and the bank is using it. But the opposite uh, situation also works with this formula. And that is when the bank loans you money. If the bank loans you money, then, uh, then uh, the formula works also in the same in the, in the opposite direction. Now we we talked about putting a hundred dollars in a savings account. The hundred dollars is called principal. That's this P here. It's principal. The A is the total amount that you make after one year. So that's a hundred and one dollars in our example. That's A. So that's what that's what we're trying to calculate with this formula is the total amount you'll have in your account. So a hundred dollars plus one dollar is a hundred and one dollars. That's A. R is the percent, in our example we used 1%, R is the percent written as a decimal. It must be written as a decimal. That's extremely important. If you write, uh, if you don't change the, the, the decimal to a percent, this formula is not going to work. So be aware of that. And T is the amount of time that the money is in uh, the, the, uh, the account, the savings account in our example. Now, interest can be paid per year. In that case, you would make $1. But interest can also be paid per month. If you're paid, if the bank pays you simple interest, uh, excuse me, 1% simple interest per month, then after one year, you would make $12. And you'd have a total of $112 in your bank account. So if, it's, if the interest is paid more frequently, then obviously you're going to make more money. If the interest is paid per day, then you would have... Four hundred sixty-five dollars in your bank account. The original hundred plus three hundred sixty-five, because you'd be paid one dollar each day. But uh, normally, interest is paid per year. So it depends on what what unit or how how often uh, the interest is paid. So that's simple interest. So now it's time to do some practice problems. You invest $80 in a savings account at your bank that pays 0.9% simple interest per year. How much money will you have after seven years? So let's start by writing the formula. And I know what you're going to say. You're, you're going to say, well, we don't need to write that formula again. We already have it up here. Well, I already know, I, I know we already have it, but uh, when you're doing any kind of problem, you're trying to show the reader 
how you're solving the problem, and you need to show the reader what tool you're using. It's like if you're going to uh, build a house or something, you have to show people, well, I'm using a drill or a hammer or something like that. You have to show the tool that you're using. So we're showing that we're using this tool. You have to show those uh, formulas every time that you do the problem. You have to write them over and over and over again. And the good thing about writing those formulas over and over and over again is that it helps you remember the formula. So now we're going to plug in the numbers. So the principal is $80 in this example. And we have to change the percent to a decimal. And if you forgot how to change the percent to a decimal, you always take the decimal and you move it two places to the left, which means that you have to add a placeholder zero. Whoops. So we have two place, we have an extra placeholder zero here, and this zero is just written so the decimal doesn't look like a speck of dirt. All right, so we plug in that percent as a decimal. It's extremely important. It must be written as a decimal. Let me move this over here. All right, so we've got the we've got R is 0 0.009, and then we multiply by seven years because it says seven years there. I'm going to shrink this. So now we've got all our numbers plugged in. And we're pretty much ready to go. So at this point, you can see that we have multiple operations. We have addition and multiplication. So at this point, you know what we have to do. We have to use the order of operations agreement, which tells us how to interpret this expression. It's, one, it's, it's fine to write an expression on paper, but if people don't know how to interpret it, it's pretty much useless to them. So the order of operations agreement tells us to multiply first. And the reason I know that is I know I remember the acronym PEMDAS. So we're going to multiply first. And it, it also tells us the general rule is to multiply starting with the operation farthest to the left. In this case, it doesn't really matter because it's all just multiplication, but let's just keep that rule. So 80 times 0 0.009. Now, notice that uh, I'm multiplying decimals, and the decimal in 80 is right here. You see that? Now, how do I know that? Because 80 is a whole number, and, you know, obviously the big question is, where, where is the decimal? Because it's invisible. 80 is a whole number, so the decimal is invisible in every whole number, so we need to know where it is. The decimal is always directly to the right of the number in the ones place, which is, in this case, zero. So the decimal we know goes there. And so now that we know where the decimal is, you can see that I did not line up the decimals. Remember, when you're multiplying decimals, you do not line up the decimals, or you don't have to line up the decimals. All right, so now let's go ahead and multiply. Nine times zero is zero. And, and before, I, before I proceed, also, I just want to re remind you, these leading zeros, we don't care about those until the very end of the problem. So nine times zero. Nine times zero is zero. Nine times eight is 72. So now I need to think about the, where, where the decimals are to, uh, to uh, figure out where to put the decimal in our answer, because all I need to know at this point is where to put the decimal. So we count the number of digits to the right of the decimal in each of these numbers. So we have 1, 2, 3, and we have no digits to the right of the decimal on this number. So that's a total of three digits to the right of the decimal. So 1, 2, 3. We always start from the very uh, right of the, of the product. So then we end up with... Zero point seventy two. Notice that I uh, I did not write this ending zero because that ending zero is to the right of the decimal, and what that means is seven hundred twenty thousandths reduces to seventy two hundredths. So 
So uh, I don't need to write that ending zero. We talked about that briefly in one class. So again, let's review here. I did 80 times 0 0.009, and that's 0 0.72. So now I just have to multiply again. So 0, 0 0.72 times 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 7 is 49, plus 1 is 50. Now I just have to figure out where to put the decimal, and we have one two digits to the right of the decimal here. And again, seven is a whole number, so the decimal is directly to the right of the num of the uh, number in the in the the ones place, which is right here. Again, the, the decimal is invisible in seven, but we know it's right there. So you can see there are no digits to the right of the decimal in seven. So there are two digits to the right of the decimal in point seventy two. There are two digits to the right of the decimal in point seventy two, and no digits to the right of the decimal in 7. So that's a total of two digits to the right of the decimal, so we always start farthest to the right and we count over one, two places. Now if, if this is boring you because you already remember this, then um, you can just fast forward through all these explanations, but it's been a couple classes, two, three, four, five classes, I can't remember, uh, since we did this. So I just want to review these basic contents before we proceed through the, uh, through the rest of this uh, class. So now all we have to do is add the 80 and the 5.04. Now you can do that in your head pretty quickly. You know, what's, what's $80 plus $5.04? Well, obviously it's $85.04, but I just want to do the operation here so you can see how we would do that. When you're adding and subtracting decimals, uh, un unlike when you're multiplying decimals, when, when you're multiplying decimals, we didn't have to line up the decimal, you see? We didn't have to line it up. But when you're adding and subtracting decimals, you do have to line up the decimals. See how I lined them up? If you don't line up the decimals when you're adding these uh, decimals or subtracting them, then you're guaranteed to get the wrong answer. So now we just add 4 plus 0 is 4, 0 plus 0 is 0, 5 plus 0 is 5, and 8 plus nothing is 8. Now we just have to figure out where to put the decimal. So when you're adding and subtracting the decimals, all you do, if you recall, all you do is you just bring that decimal straight down. So then we end up with 85.04, which is what we predicted. 85.04. Now, if I rectangle that answer and I write that as my final answer, I'll get one point taken off. Because in this problem, you have to write units, so we have to write dollars. I almost rectangled the answer and then went on to the next problem, but I would have got one point taken off. So what this means is if you invest $80 in a savings account that pays 0.9% simple interest per year, after seven years, you'll have a total of $85.04. You started with $80, but you made $5.04 from the interest after five years, or excuse me, seven years. All right, so let's do a couple more of these together, and then we can do... Um, we can do uh, a couple, uh, you can do a couple on your own. You take out a $2,009 loan from a bank that charges 7% simple interest per day. If you keep the money for 36 days, how much will you owe? So this is not really realistic because banks don't usually uh, charge you uh, interest per day, at least not that I know of. But uh, this is just to demonstrate that, t that, that the, the, the time can be in days or months or, or years. So we're going to write down the formula that we're going to use. You always have to write that formula down, even if you don't want to. The principal is 2009. And notice that this is, an ex this is an example where the bank is loaning you money, whereas the previous example, you were loaning the bank money by putting the money in your savings account. And we have to, we have to change 7% to a decimal. So when you change a percent to a decimal, you just move the decimal two places to the left. You always move it two places to the left, without exception. Um, but the problem is we can't move the decimal two places to the left because there is no decimal. We can't see it. Remember, it, if it, we have a whole number, so the decimal is invisible. Remember, the decimal is directly to the right of the number in the ones place, so it's right there. 
So we're going to move it one, two places over, and we have 0 0.07. And again, we just write this zero so the decimal doesn't look like a speck of dirt. Again, I know I'm reviewing a lot of stuff here, but uh, I just want to make, sh make sure that you uh, remember these concepts, or else it's kind of pointless to go on in this class. All right, so we put the percent written as a decimal. The percent must be written as a decimal, or else you're going to get the wrong answer. And then finally, we're going to multiply by the amount of time written in the unit that uh, the money is paid, uh, the, the unit that describes the frequency the money is paid, which in this case is 36 days. And then we just have to um, evaluate this expression by uh, doing all the operations. So again, you can see that this is an application of the order of operations agreement. It's the same, it's the same situation. You just use PEMDAS, and PEMDAS tells us to multiply first, then to add. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, shrink this a little bit so we have more room. And I'm going to shrink this. Sorry, I should have given you more room. And it's always good to divide your work up so that people know what's going on. You don't get confused. All right, so we have to, PEMDAS tells us to multiply first, and we're going to keep the general rule, multi, multi, do the operations farthest to the left in the, mul in the multiplication. So that would be 2009 times 0 0.07. Again, it doesn't really matter because these are all just uh, multiplication operations, but we're just going to keep that general rule. So 2009 times 0 0.07. And again, I want to I want to remind you that these leading zeros, you can just ignore those. And the decimal in 2009 is right here. Notice I did not line up the decimals. When you're multiplying, you do not have to line up the decimals. 7 times 9 is 63, carry the 6. 7 times 0 is 0 plus 6 is 6. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 2 is 14. Now, we have to figure out where to put the decimal. So you count the number of digits to the right of the decimal in both of these numbers. So we have 1, 2, and no digits to the right of the decimal in this number. So that's a total of two digits to the right of the decimal. So we count over 1, 2. And so we have 140.63 times 36. So again, we multiplied these two numbers and got 140.63. So now we're going to uh, we're going to need a lot of space for the next uh, product. 140.63 times 36. So again, I did not line up the decimal. The decimal is right here in the 36, even though it's invisible. But I did. It is it is useful to line up the numbers though. That kind of helps order the the numbers in in our head. All right. So now we're going to multiply six times all these numbers. So 6 times 3 is 18, carry the 1. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 1 is 37, carry the 3. 6 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. 6 times 4 is 24, carry the 2. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. Then we're going to put a placeholder 0. And if you went to, if you had a third number here, then you would put two placeholders in, in the third row, and then three placeholders in the fourth row, and so on and so forth. But we're not going to do calculations that are that uh, complicated. So now, at this point, I'm going to erase all these numbers I carried so I don't confuse myself. And then I'm going to multiply 3 times 140.63. Again, if, if this is boring you because it's all review, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just want to make sure you've got this down before we go on to all the other problems. So 3 times... Uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 6 is 18, carry the 1, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, 3 times 4 is 12, carry the 1, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. And it's extremely important that you line these numbers up. If you don't line them up properly, you're guaranteed to get the wrong answer.
8 plus 0 is 8. 7, 7 plus 9 is 16. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 8 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. 8 plus 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. So now we just have to know where to put the decimal. So we count the digits to the right of the decimal in both of these numbers. We have one two digits to the right of the decimal in this number and no digits to the right of the decimal in that number. So that's a total of two digits to the right of the decimal. So we count one, two. And we can put the comma there if we want. But a lot of times in four digit numbers, the comma is just left out for whatever reason. So A equals the total amount of money in that uh, you owe the bank in this case. In the previous problem, it was the total amount of money that's going to be in your account, in your account, the total amount of money you have. But in this example, it's going to be the total amount of money you owe the bank. The total amount is 2009. Whoops, sorry about that. 2009 plus 5062.68. So now all we have to do is add up these two numbers, and then we'll be done with that problem. So obviously I'm going to have to shrink this. I don't have much room here. And it's always good to, like I said, to write, to divide your work up so people don't get confused. Again, you're, you're always writing your work as if other people are going to read your work. So that's the, the most important thing is to write so that other people can understand what you're doing. So 2009 plus 5062.68. And the decimal in 2009 is right here. It's invisible, but I know it's there. It's always directly to the right of the numbers in the ones place. And the most important thing when I'm adding these, these decimals is notice that I lined up the decimal. When you're multiplying, like I said, you do not have to line up the decimal. But when you're adding or subtracting, you do have to line up the decimal. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but these things are crucial, or else you're going to get the wrong answer. 8 plus 0 is 8. 6 plus 0 is 6. 2 plus 9 is 11, carry the 1, 6 plus 0 is uh, 0, or excuse me, 6 plus 0 is 6, plus 1 is 7, 0 plus 0 is 0, 5 plus 2 is 7. And then we bring the decimal straight down. So we have 7,071.68, and if we write that as our final answer, we're going to get one point taken off because we have to write the units which is dollars. So if the bank loans you $2,009 and they make you pay 7% simple interest per day for 36 days, you're going to owe them a lot of money in interest. That's why it's not really realistic to have a problem where you're paying uh, interest per day because it would just, it would just uh, add up to uh, $5,062.68, which is more than the original loan that they gave you. So the total amount you would owe is 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 uh, like more than triple what you actually what they actually loaned you in the first place. All right. So let's do uh, one more of these problems together, just to make sure you got this. Again, we're reviewing a lot of concepts here, and then you can do the next three on your own. You take out a $600 loan from a bank that charges 2.3% simple interest each month. Assuming that you do not pay any of the money, how much will you owe the bank after 24 months? So again, it's it's uh, most common for bank for banks to pay simple interest per year, or for you to pay simple interest per year. Um, at least I believe. I don't know that much about banking, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's paid per year. Uh, but in these problems, I just want you to get, to get the idea that, that uh, uh, simple interest doesn't necessarily have to be paid per year. It can be paid per month. All right, so we have to write the formula that we're going to use. And this time I'm going to write small so I have more room. So that's the formula we're going to use. We have to write the tool that you're going to use. And then all we have to do is just plug in the numbers. So the principal is 600. 2.3%, uh, we have to write that as a decimal, and that would be 0 
because we have to move the decimal two places. And they're going to multiply by 24 months because the interest is paid per month, and it's 24 months. Now, again, you have 2.3%, right? And you have to move the decimal how many places? How many places do you move the decimal? Every single time when you're moving in, when you're changing a percent to a decimal, you move the decimal two places with, without exception. One, two. So you have 0 0.023. And we write this zero here just so the decimal doesn't look like a speck of dirt. All right. So now, again, we're just following order of operations. All we have to do is perform these calculations, and then we'll be done. But there's a lot of a math we're, we're reviewing here. So the order of operations, PEMDAS, the acronym that we use, it reminds us that we have to multiply first, then add. So, and we're going to multiply, we're going to start with this product first. So 600 times 0 0.023. And once again, I'm going to multiply 3 times all these numbers, and then I'm going to multiply 2 times all these numbers after I put a placeholder 0. 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 6 is 18. Then I'm going to put a placeholder 0, and now I'm going to multiply 2 times all these numbers. So 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 6 is 12. Then we're going to add those numbers up. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 8 plus 0 is 8. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 plus nothing is 1. All right, now we count the number of digits. And again, I, I, the, dec the decimal in 600 is right here. Remember that? So we can see that I did not line up the decimals because we don't have to line up the decimals when we're multiplying. So now we count the number of digits to the right of the decimal. 1, 2, 3, and no digits to the right of the decimal here. So that's a total of three digits to the right of the decimal. So we count over 1, 2, 3, and we have 13.8. Now, why did I write 13.8, not 13.800? Why did I leave these zeros off? Because whenever you have ending zeros to the right of the decimal, you can just leave those off. Because... 800 thousandths is the same thing as 8 tenths. It just reduces to 8 tenths. Remember reducing in to lowest terms? Okay, so now we just have to multiply 13.8 times 24. 13.8 times 24. And again, the decimal in the 24 is here, so you can see I didn't line up the decimals. I don't have to when you're multiplying. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Put a placeholder 0. I'm going to erase those numbers I carried so I don't confuse myself. Now we move on to the 2. We did 4 times all these numbers. Now we're going to move on to 2 times all these numbers after we put this placeholder. 2 times 8 is 16. Carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, 2 times 1 is 2. And then we just add all those numbers up. Because again, multiplication is just a different form of addition in the end. 2 plus 0 is 2, 5 plus 6 is 11, carry the 1. 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 7 is 13, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Now we just have to figure out where to put the decimal. So we count the number of digits to the right of the decimal in each of these numbers. So we have one number to the right of the decimal in this number and no numbers to the right of the decimal in that number. So we just count one place over. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this stuff seems really straightforward. Well, it's supposed to be straightforward because it's decimals. That's why we're using decimals is because it just de decimals make the calculations easier. We could use other forms of uh, fractions besides decimals, but uh, because our number system is based on tens, decimals makes everything easy. It makes the algorithms easy. All right, so we end up with 600 plus 331.2. So now all we have to do is add these two numbers. But remember, when you're adding numbers, you have to line up the decimals. And again, the decimal in 600 is, is invisible, but I know it's right there. You can put a placeholder zero there if you want. 
And now we just 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 0 is 1, 3 plus 0 is 3, 3 plus 6 is 9. And the decimal goes straight down. So A equals 931.2, but 2 tenths. Now, now in, 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 in the other examples, we, we left out the ending zeros. But in this case, we're actually going to write the ending zero. We're going to add an ending zero. We can add as many ending zeros here as we want because it's just going to reduce to uh, 2 tenths. But I want to write one ending zero because uh, dollars are divided up into hundredths because a hundredth is one cent. So it would be $931.20. Um, if, if you're a little confused by that, don't worry. It's not a, it's not a huge, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not that important at this point, but uh, just remember we're counting dollars, so we don't count dollars as, as in tenths. We count in hundreds, cents. All right, so uh, if you put, if you take out a $600 loan, and the, the bank charges 2.3% simple interest each month, uh, you're going to owe the original $600, obviously. You have to pay it back eventually. But you're going to owe $331.20 in interest. So you add all that together, and that's your total debt. So the reason that interest is so important, and the reason we're learning it today, is because in life, uh, most people eventually have to take out loans or give people loans. And so it's extremely important to understand the concept of interest. All right, so now the fun begins. That's a joke, but uh, it's time for you to do uh, practice problems. So why don't you try number four, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, so we're back. A equals P plus P times R times T. Plug in the principal, which is 94. Plug in the percent written as a decimal. And then we have six years. So make sure that's all correct. All right. Then we multiply 94 times 0 0.005. And that's going to be... Four hundred and seventy, I believe, and then it would be uh, four hundred and seventy. That would be zero point four seven. And uh, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and do that, just so you can you can I can remind you how how this is done. So five times, we're going to ignore the leading zeros. Five times four is 20, carry the two. Five times nine is 45, plus two is 47. And one, two, three. Three places because there are three digits to the right of the decimal here and no digit, digits to the right of the decimal there. So that's how we got 0.47. We don't write the ending zero because it's to the right of the decimal. You can if you want, but it's just going to be more work. And then we... Uh, Multiply 0 0.47 times 6, we get 42, 24, 28, we get 1, 2, 2.82. 2 and again, I, I breezed through it, but 0.5%, I just want you to, to remember, you just move the decimal over two places and you get 0 0.005. And... Uh, So $94 plus $2.82. Um, you know, I'm not going to do these calculations over and over again because it's just going to take too long. If you want to learn how to do this stuff, you can just look back at the previous problems. So if you add 94 plus $2.82, you just get $96.82. Again, when you're adding the decimals, you have to line them up. And, we'll, and you can put placeholder zeros there. You just add those up and you get, bring the decimal straight down, and you get 96.82. Now, again, if you write 96.82, you'll get one point taken off. You have to write 96.82 dollars. 
You know what? I, sh I shouldn't write that right next to that number that because that's mathematically uh, nonsense. We'll just move this number over a little bit and write the dollar sign there. So if you got $96.82, good job. All right, try number five. And by the way, if you get, if you did something wrong, that's okay. That that's a lot of calculations. So there's potential to potential to make a lot of mistakes. That's perfectly fine. Just go back and figure out what you did wrong. So uh, why don't you try number five? And when you're done, we'll come back and do it together. All right, we're back. A is equal to P plus P times R times T. That's the formula that we're using. Plug in the principal, which would be 1,500, and I'm not going to write the comma. It's often left off in uh, four-digit numbers. And it's 11% interest, so it'll be 0 0.11. And four years we're leaving in. All right. So now we multiply 1,500 times 0 0.11. Make sure those numbers are lined up. And we get 165. So now we just have to multiply 165 times 4. And that will be 660. I'm not going to keep showing these calculations because it's just going to take forever. So we end up with $2,160, or you can re read it as 2160 So that's the total amount of money. Uh, 400 plus 2, 5, 640. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's correct. 2160 2, Good. So if you got 2,160, good job. There's a lot of calculations going on here. And be sure to show all those calculations. I'm just not showing them because uh, it's going to take forever if we have to show every single calculation. If you forgot how to do something, just look at the previous three problems that we did. All right, so let's try one more of these problems. And by the way, if you got the wrong answer, that's okay. There's a lot of calculations we're doing here. Just go back and figure out what you did wrong. And uh, we're going on to the next problem. All right. You put $23.50 in a savings account that pays 0.06% simple interest yearly. How much money will be in this account after 100 years? So try that problem. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Um, write the formula that we're going to use. Principle is 23.5. Now I'm going to leave off that ending zero for calculations because it just makes it easier. Again, 51 hundredths reduces to 5 tenths, so we don't need to write the zero. And the percent written as a decimal is 0 0.006. Wait, no, I, I, that's not enough zeros. Need one more zero there. All right. So now we just have to perform the calculations. So 23.5 times 0 0.0006. Again, PEMDAS tells us to multiply first. And we have one, two, three, four digits to the right of the decimal and one digit to the right of the decimal. So that's four, five places we need to move over. One, two, three, four, five. So we have to add a zero placeholder there. So we end up with 0 0.04, whoops, 
one four one and we can leave off that ending zero because it's to the right of the decimal all right so then we multiply that by a hundred So multiplying that by 100 is uh, pretty standard. Whenever you multiply it by a power of 10, you just move over, move the decimal over uh, the uh, the number of times that the, 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 of the power. So this would be uh, 100. So that's two zeros. So that means you move it over two places. So it'd just be 1.41. But just to review this, I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and show it. I probably should have showed all the work for the last problem. Uh, but uh, this class is going to be very long if we keep showing every single step. So zero zero zero, placeholder zero zero zero. Two placeholders, because now we're multiplying by three digits, so we need uh, we need uh, two placeholders. Then one times one is one, one times four is four, one times one is one. All right, then we uh, add them all up, and we have one, two, three, four digits to the right of the decimal, and no digits to the right of the decimal. So that's a total of one, two, three, four. So we have, like I predicted, 1.41. We're going to talk more about doing calculations faster there when we multiply by powers of 10. You just move the decimal two places over. So at this point, we're just going to add 23.5 plus 1.41, and because we're uh, because we're adding the the uh, the decimals, we have to line them up. Not so when you're multiplying, but when you're adding or subtracting, you always have to line up. Bring the decimal straight down, and you have 24.91 dollars. So if you got 24 dollars and 91 cents, good job. If you didn't, that's okay. Just go back and figure out what you did wrong. Okay. So now we're moving on to interest alone. So the next the next concept here is going to be easier than the concept we just learned. This equation requires you to calculate the interest. That's what P times R times T is. That's the interest. But then you're going to add the interest to the original amount that you have in the bank account. So you have the interest plus P. But in these problems down here, I just want you to be aware that in some problems, you're just going to be asked the interest alone. You're not going to be asked to add that to the original amount you put in. So we're not calculating the total amount you have in your savings account in these problems. We're only calculating the interest that you made or the interest that you have to pay if, if, you're, if, if somebody loans you some money. So the letters mean the same thing. The only difference is we have I, which means interest. So let's do a practice problem. We'll do one practice problem, then you can do two on your own. So again, this is going to be a lot easier than the stuff that we just did. Not, not as many calculations. So this is good. If you, if you invest $150 in a bank account that pays you 0.3% simple interest yearly, and you keep the money in the account for three years, how much money will you earn? It's asking how much money will you earn. It's not asking you how much money you have in your account. It's asking how much money you will earn. So it only wants the interest part of the formula. So in the, again, in the previous problems, we wrote P plus P times R times T. But in these problems, we don't want this P right here. We're just calculating the interest. So it's just I equals P times R times T. So this is going to be a lot easier. So you write that formula, same formula we had up here. That shows the reader the formula that you're using. And the principal is $150. It's the same, same, type, same thing we did before, 0 0.003. That's the percent written as a decimal. And T is three years. So we don't really need to use use order of operations here because all we have is a bunch of a bunch of multiplication operations. It doesn't really matter what order you you, you multiply. Um, but just to keep the tr tradition, we'll multiply uh, f uh, starting with the operation farthest to the left. So 150 
times 0 0.003. And the decimal goes one, two, three places. Um, so you have, and you got to show every single step. And we can leave off that ending zero because it's to the right of the decimal. And multiply that by three. And three times 0.45 would be 1.35. We can do it over here if you really want to. Notice I didn't I didn't line up the decimals. I don't have to. And you count one two places over because we have two two digits to the right of the decimal and no digits to the right of the decimal for a total of two digits to the right of the decimal. So one one point thirty five. If you write that, you'll get one point taken off. So you have to write your dollar sign. So the difference with the with this problem is that you're not writing the total amount that you have in the bank account. If you, in the previous problem, you would take this number and you would add it to the principal to get $151.35. But in this problem, it's not asking you the total amount you have in your, your account. It's just asking how much you make after, uh, after three years. So it's just asking for the interest. The money. When people say interest, they mean the money earned by interest or through interest. All right, so you've got that formula. Um, I'm going to write the formula down again. Just so you remember, e equals p times r times t, because that's what that's this pro what this problem is going to be. So why don't you attempt this problem, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. I equals p, which is 360, times r, which is 0 0.09, times uh, eight months. So. 360 times 0 0.09. Ignore the leading zeros. And we can leave off the ending zero. Then 32.4 times 8. And we end up with $259.20. So I'm going to add an ending zero so that we can count in terms of cents, hundreds of a dollar, as opposed to uh, tenths of a dollar. Because that's just the way that we do it. We count in cents. We don't count in tenths of a, of a dollar. So if you got $259.20, good job. All right, number nine. Go ahead and attempt number nine. And again, this is just an interest problem. So it's I equals P times R times T. I'm going to go ahead and write that formula for you. And remember, you have to write this formula down in, in your homework. Or else uh, you'll get, uh, if, you're, if you're graded on your homework, you get points taken off. So I equals P times R times T. Attempt this problem. When you're done, we'll come back and do it together. All right, we're back. And again, in the previous problem, it was saying how much money in interest will you owe him? So that's why we knew to, ca to use the interest formula alone. In this problem, it was saying how much, how much will he have to pay in interest? It says in interest, you see? So we knew to, to use this formula. All right, so we just plug everything in. Principal is 8,990. Interest is 0 0.012, and it's one year. That's good. That'll, that'll make our calculations easier. So now we do 8,990 times 0 0.012. And again, we're going to ignore these leading zeros. And I don't have to line up the decimal. The decimal is here in, in the whole number. So I didn't line them up. So I'm going to multiply two times everything. Put a placeholder zero and move on to the one. Multiply one by everything in, in the upper row.
and now we're ready to add. Make sure these numbers are all lined up properly. And then count the digits to the right of the decimal, one, two, three, and no digits to the right of the decimal there. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. So I equals 107.88, and we just have to multiply that by one. And whenever you multiply anything by one, you just get the original number. So it's going to be $107.88. So if you got the right answer, good job. So again, $107.88 is how much you'll have to pay in interest. Actually, no, that's the amount that your, your, that your business partner has to pay you in interest. He has to pay the original amount, whoops, he has to pay the original amount back, but we just want to know how much he has to pay in interest. So you're making a profit by loaning your friend money or your business partner money. Your, the downside is that you have to loan him the, the money so you don't have that 8990 during the, uh, during the uh, however, however much time it is, uh, one year. But the, the upside is that if he does pay the money back, then you'll make a profit of $107.88. The big question is, will he pay the money back? So that's the primary concern for banks is, are people going to pay the money back eventually? Is their investment going to pay off? So that's uh, the concept of interest. We learned how to compute uh, the total amount of money in your savings account after you earn interest. And we also figured out how to just calculate interest alone. So again, the two formulas are uh, A equals P plus P times R times T. That's the total amount of money in your bank account. And we also learn how to calculate just the interest alone. And we learn the concept of interest altogether. And it's a, that's an extremely important application of the order of operations agreement. All right, so now for the rest of the class, we're going to learn the second uh, specific example or, or uh, application of the order of operations agreement, and that is percent change. So let's give an example. Let's say that you have, um, let's say you have $100. We used $100, for example, for the uh, investing your money in the savings account. So let's say you have $100 and you want to increase that $100 by um, 7%. That's what percent change is. You're increasing something by a certain percent or you're decreasing it. So we have to define what percent increase or percent decrease is so we can figure out what percent change is. So if we take 100 and we increase it by 7%, what we're going to do is we're going to add 7% of 100. So we're going to add 7% of, of, of the original number. The problem is, how do we figure out how to find 7% 7, 7 of, a, of, of a number? Well, we actually figured that out in a previous class. And I, I'm actually going to use a, a different number here. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use 80. So let's say we're going we're gonna to add 7% of 80. So you take the original number, which is 80, and then you add 7% of 80. But again, how do we find 7% of 80? Well, you figured we learned how to do that in a previous class. I think it was applications of percents. So if you have 80 and you want to find 7% of 80, you take the percent and you change it to a decimal. So 7% becomes 0 0.07. We learned that by doing the, the interest problems today. And you multiply it. So change the percent to a decimal and then you take that decimal and you multiply it by the original number and that gives you 7% of 80. Again, this is review. So you multiply that. Let's get rid of that highlighting. You multiply that and you get uh, 5.6. Again, I'm, I'm not going to review how to do this because we just did that about nine times. So hopefully you're catching on to, to the operations there. So if you want to increase 80 by 7%, you have to take the original number and then add 7% of that number. That's all we're doing with percent change. It's simple. But if you're going to do a percent decrease, 
The only difference is instead of a plus, you're going to subtract 5.6. So no big deal. So what this formula tells us is you're going to take the original number and you're going to add or subtract depending on if it's a percent increase or percent decrease. That means F plus or minus F times R. So you read that as plus or minus. So again, if it's an increase, it's a plus. If it's decrease, it's a minus. So you don't write both of these. You just write one of them. In this case, it's an increase, so we just wrote the plus. So you add 80 plus 5.6, and that's obviously 85.6. So if, if you increase 80 by, by 7%, you get 85.6. So you take the original number, and if it's an increase, you add uh, the percent of the number. And to find the percent, you take the percent, change it to a decimal. Remember, that's what R means. It's the percent converted to a decimal. Then you multiply it by the original number. So this is the uh, percent of the number, and you add it to the original number. So if all this stuff is, is, uh, is seeming uh, uh, really confusing, that's OK, because we're just going to do a bunch of practice problems, and you'll get it down. So let's go on to our first problem here. Let's see, that was, we need problem number 10. So we'll do one of these problems together first. We already did one on our own on, together, but we'll do one more, and then you can do number 11 on your own. What is 93 increased by 5%? Okay, so we're going to use the formula. Always write down the formula that you're going to use. The number we're looking for is the original number plus F times R. That's the formula. I just rewrote the formula. And again, it's plus because we're doing increase. We're not doing decrease. So now we just plug in the numbers. The first number is 93, or the original number, whatever you want to call it. And then 5% written as a decimal is 0 0.05. Now again, I don't want to go over how to change a percent to a decimal again. We just did that about 10 times. So you should have that down by now. So now we just have to follow order of operations. I didn't mention that uh, the reason this is an application of order, order of operations is because you have multiple operations. So you just have to multiply first, then add. Pem, tem, PEMDAS tells us to multiply first, then add. So you take 93, multiply it by 0 0.05, and you get 4.65. And uh, I'm going to move this up a little bit. We're getting a little cramped here, but that's OK, I guess. Whoops, I should just keep that work there. So then we just have to add 93 and 4.65. So when you do that, when you add decimals, remember, you have to line up the decimal. I didn't care about lining up the, uh, lining up the decimal in, in the multiplication. 5 plus 0 is 5, 6 plus 0 is 6, 4 plus 3 is 7, 9 plus nothing is 9. Then you bring the decimal straight down when you add or subtract decimals. So our final answer is 97.65. So we increased 93 by 5%. So we took the 93 and then we added 5% of 93 to get to uh, 97 dollars, not 97, not not dollars. This is not dollars. 97.65. All right. Let me just add, check all that, make sure it's correct. Everything looks good. So that's what we're doing. You got to write the original formula. Don't forget to write the original formula. You got to show the reader what you're doing. That'll help you remember the the formula. Now you try number 11, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Let's write the original formula. The number we're looking for, the percent increase, which is n, is f plus f times r. Again, we're using plus because it's an increase. In the next problems, we'll use minus because the, it's going to be a decrease. So plug in the numbers. Then we just multiply first. PEMDAS tells us to multiply first. And 
and we get 252. Then you add those together and you get 9.52. I'm not going to do that calculation. Just make sure you line up the decimals when you add those numbers. And remember the decimal on 7 is directly to the right of 7, even though it's invisible. So if you got 9.52, good job. So that's percent increase. That's what we're going to be doing for uh, the next, you know, seven, eight, nine problems. But this next one is percent decrease. So the the uh, the percent uh, the uh, the 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 number we're looking for is f minus f times r because we're decreasing uh, eight by ninety seven percent. So we take the the first number or the original number. And then we subtract 97% of the original number. We have to change. We have to change the percent to a decimal. 0 0.97 times 8. And we get 7.76. So now we're going to subtract. Now we haven't done subtraction today yet. Whoops. We haven't done subtraction today yet. So we're going to have to review that subtraction. Whoops. So we're going to subtract 8, or excuse me, we're going to subtract 7.76 7 from 8. So the 8 is the bigger number, so we have to write it on top, and we have to line up the decimals. When you're adding or subtracting, you have to line up the decimals. And you can write those placeholder zeros. So now, subtracting is much, much different from, from, from adding. So we have to be careful here. Don't jump ahead. So we have to subtract 6 from 0. The problem is we cannot subtract 6 from 0. It's impossible because we get a negative number. We haven't learned negative numbers yet. You're going to learn that in the next class or the next course. So we have to borrow from the 0 here. The problem is the 0 here doesn't have anything. So we have to go all the way over to the 8 and borrow from the 8. So we're going to borrow 1 from the 8 and it's going to become 7. And we're going to give that 1 we borrow from the 8 to this 0. And that 0 is going to become 10. But then we have to, we still have to give a number to the, to the 0 here. So we have to borrow from that 10 again to make it 9. And we're going to take the 1 that we borrowed from the 10 and give it to this 0. And it's going to become 10. So that should be uh, somewhat familiar to you because we did uh, subtraction. Uh, it's been a while since we did it. Maybe three or four classes, I don't remember. So at this point, we're ready to go. Now we subtract 6 from 10. So 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 7 is 2. And 7 minus 7 is nothing. Then we just bring the decimal straight down. Remember, when you're adding or subtracting decimals, you just bring the decimal straight down. So after we decreased by 97%, the final answer is 0 0.24. So in this number, in this example, the 8 actually uh, got smaller. It went from 8, uh, 8 to 0.24 because we decreased by 97%. That's almost 100%. If we decrease by 100%, then it would just we'd just go from 8 to 0, because 100% is everything. Remember, 100% means 100 out of 100. 100 out of 100 is everything. That's a whole number. So because because 97% is so close to 100%, it almost went down to 0. So now, why don't you try number 13, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. N equals F minus F times R. It must be minus. The original number is 23. The first number is 23. Um, I just wrote uh, F for first number, even though it doesn't necessarily have to be the first number in the problem. I, I just couldn't think of variable, think of uh, letters, but so I just came up with N and F. No big deal. All right, so then we just do uh, 23 times 0 0.06. Six times, I'll just do that. And you end up with 
So all you have to do now is subtract 1.38 from 23. When you add or subtract decimals, you have to line up the decimal. And I knew that decimal was right there in the, in the 23, even though it's invisible. I know I keep sounding like a broken record, but I want to make sure that you remember that. So now we have to do the borrowing thing again. So that 3 becomes a 2, the, ten, the 0 becomes a 10, borrow from the 10 it becomes a 9, and that 0 becomes a 10. Then we're ready to go. 10 minus 8 is 2, 9 minus 3 is 6, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 0 is 2, bring the decimal straight down. So after the percent decrease, we have 21.62. So if you got 21.62, good job. If you didn't, that's okay. Just figure out what you did wrong. All right, so now we're just going to do a bunch of different variations of the same problems that we just did for practice. So this is a percent increase. So it's n equals n plus... Well, wait, I'm using the wrong letters there, sorry. F plus F times R. Again, it's plus because we know it's an increase. If it were decrease, it would be minus. So just plug in the numbers. Now notice I wrote 0 0.9. I did not write 0 0.90. Because for when you're calculating numbers, it's easier to just leave off the ending zeros to the right of the decimal. We talked about that multiple times. Now, in this case, this is going to be really easy. We don't have to show the work on, on, on 6 times 0.9. Because we know 6 times 9 from our multiplication factor is just 54. And there's one digit to the right of the decimal. So you just count over one place. So we'd have 5.4. So now we just add 6 plus 5.4, and again, that's really easy. Uh, it's just going to be 6 plus 5.4 is 11.4. Uh, a lot of these calculations you can do in your head. Now, if you're really, really afraid of doing the calculations in your head, again, just make sure to line up the decimals and bring the decimal straight down. All right? So now you try one of those. But, that, but, but before you do that, just make sure that you realize that this problem is, unlike the previous problem we just did, this is a decrease. So you're going to subtract. So try number 15, and when you're done, we'll come back and do it together. All right, we're back. n equals f minus f times r. f is 3, and it's going to be 0 0.2. That's the easiest way to do it. If you do 0 0.20, it just makes the calculations more difficult. All right, so this is another one where the calculations are fairly easy. 3 times 2 is 6, and then there's one digit to the right of the decimal, so it would be 0 0.6. I'm going to move that up a little bit. Whoops. And then 3 minus 0 0.6. You could probably do that in your head, but we'll just do it together. You can put some placeholder zeros if you want. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 6 we can't do, so we got to borrow. 10 minus 6 is 4. 2 minus 0 is 2. So we have 2.40, which we can just write as 2.4. So if you got 2.4, good job. If you didn't, that's okay. Just go back and figure out what you did wrong. All right. So number 16, let's do that one together. If 9.5 is decreased by 2.2%, what does it become? So this is a decrease. So it's going to be F minus F times R. And the original number is 9.5. And we're decreasing by 0 0.022. So this is, this is only a different problem because the calculations are a little bit more difficult. But it's the same thing we've been doing pretty much for the whole class. So I just want to remind you, ignore the leading zeros. We don't have to line up the decimals because it's multiplication. And we're going to multiply 2 times 95. Then we're going to put a placeholder 0 and multiply 2 times 95 again.
put a placeholder. Make sure these numbers are all lined up or else you're guaranteed to get the wrong answer. And then we have one, two, three, four places to the right of the decimal. So one, two, three, four places. And we have n equals 9.5 minus 0 0.209. Then I'm going to add that up over here, or excuse me, subtract. When you subtract, you always have to line up the decimals. And we have to borrow from the 5, and to borrow from that 10. Bring the decimal straight down, and you have 9.291. 9 So if you decrease 9.5 by 2.2%, you get 9.291. Why don't you try number 17, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. This is an increase, so it's F plus F times R. F is 0.28, and 33% written as a decimal is 0.33. Remember, you have to write the percent as a decimal. All right, then we're going to multiply first because PEMDAS tells us to multiply first. And I did line up the decimals in this problem, but I didn't have to because it's multiplication. We have to move over one, two, three, four. So now we just have to add them up, and when you add or subtract decimals, you have to uh, line up the decimal. You can put placeholder zeros if you want. So we end up with 0 0.3724. So we increased 0.28 by 33%. And we got 0.3724. So if you got the if you got that answer, good job. If you didn't, that's okay. Just figure out what you did wrong. Alright, so we're just gonna do a couple more of these. Let's do this one together. Now we're increasing by 621%. So because the percent increase is greater than hundred percent, uh we're actually gonna we're going to uh it's going to be more than double that number. It's going to be, I think, like uh, seven times this number, even though it's a six, because you have to add this the to the original number. So it's an increase, so we know it must be plus, right? Whoops. So n is equal to f plus f times r. The original number is 78.2. And then listen very careful, carefully. Six hundred and twenty-one percent as a decimal. You move that the decimal is invisible, but it's right there. We know it's right there, and you move it one two places to the left. So six point two one. Well, I should, I should just leave that there. So times six point two one. So again, because it's a six, it's it's greater than one hundred percent. The decimal is actually going to be have a whole number six in it. All right, so now we have to multiply. I'm going to get rid of or shrink that. Dividing up the work there, now we have 78.2 times 6.21. And notice that I didn't line up the decimals. I don't have to line up the decimals. Now we're going to multiply two three-digit numbers. So we're going to multiply 1 times all these numbers. Put a placeholder. Then we're going to multiply 2 times all these numbers. Put 
then we're going to put two placeholders and then multiply I'm going to get rid of the number I carried we're going to multiply six by all these numbers and then make sure to line up all those numbers properly 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2, 8 plus 4 is 12, so on and so forth, carry the 1. And then we have 1, 2, 3 digits to the right of the decimal. So that would be 1, 2, 3. So n is equal to 78.2 plus 485. 0.622. So you can see the 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 increase is quite quite large because it's 621 percent increase. So now we just have to add those two numbers. And when you're adding decimals, again, I don't want to I don't want to drive you crazy by saying things over and over again, but you have to line up those decimals when you add or subtract decimals. 45.622, add them all up, 13, 16, 5, bring the decimal straight down. So our final answer is 563.822. So because it was such a big percent increase, whoops, because it was such a big percent increase, we went from 78.2 all the way to 563.822. So the only difference for that problem is just the calculations were, were more involved. Um, okay, so that was 18, so now we're going to do some word problems. All right, number 19. If a store sells a t-shirt for $12.60 and the sales tax on the shirt is 5%, how much will a customer pay if he buys the t-shirt? All right, so this is a an example, this is a real-world example of a percent increase problem. So tax is percent increase, so n equals f plus f times r. The store is going to, it charges $12.60. The store is going to get $12.60. But the store also collects 5% that they're going to give to the government. The government wants you to pay them also. So you start with 12, 6, and then times by the decimal written as, or the percent written as a decimal. So the total amount that you're going to pay is not twelve dollars and sixty cents. You're going to pay something more than that because you have to pay tax also. So this is an example of a percent increase problem. So all we have to do now is just perform the operations. PEMDAS tells us to multiply first and then add. And if you want to do these calculations, you can pause the video and go ahead and do them for practice. Or you can, we can just do this one together, and you can do the next one on your own. And we have one, two, three digits to the right of the decimal, so we count one, two, three. So twelve dollars and sixty cents plus sixty-three cents, and then to add those, we have to line up the decimals. And we end up with, now we have to write the units, don't forget the dollars. We also get one point taken off on a test. So the store, the store charges $12.60, but you have to pay more than that. 
you have to pay thirteen dollars and twenty three cents. So it's uh, it's kind of disappointing when you're a young person and you go into a store and you say, hey, that that's what that costs, and then you figure out, no, it actually costs a lot more because of the government. The government makes you uh, pay uh, money to them also. All right, so number 20. Uh, let's read this together, and then you can attempt it on your own. After using a special fertilizer, actually, you know what? Why don't you go ahead and just read this yourself? you got to get practice reading board problems, so attempt this problem, and then when you, when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. This is a percent uh, increase problem, so it's going to be F plus F times R. The, the original number is 0.31, and the percent is 0 0.092. So PEMDAS tells us to multiply first. So one, two, three, four, five. Then we add those up. When you're adding, you have to line up the decimals. You can put placeholder zeros if you want. So our final answer is 0 0.33852. So the average, the average uh, um, weight of the of the oranges is 0 0.31, but then he uses a special fertilizer. And then increases the size, the, the the weight to 0.33852, the average weight of all the oranges. Um, let's see here. So, but but if we write that, we're going to get the uh, we're going to get a point taken off. What do we have to do? We have to write pounds, and you can write LBS for pounds. All right, so um, why don't you try number 21? And uh, 21 is slightly different just because we have 3 million. So when you do these calculations, you can just write 3. You don't have to write, you don't have to write uh, 3 with six zeros because three million is actually three with six zeros uh, to the right of it you don't have to do that you can just write three and then we can write million at the at the end of the the problem so I want you to have a an example of a problem where you can do that so attempt number 21 when you come back we'll do it together again you can just write three you don't have to write mil three million also this is it just be be aware this is a decrease problem we're, we're subtracting attempt this problem when you come back we'll do it together All right, we're back. So this is going to be n equals f minus f times r. So f is going to be 3. And then the percent is 0 0.0019. So you multiply first. And then we count one, two, three, four. So it'll be n equals three minus 0 0.0057. So then we have to subtract. When you subtract, you gotta line up the decimals. We can put placeholder zeros there. We're gonna have to do a lot of borrowing on this one. So we can't subtract 7 from 0, so we have to borrow all the way over to the 3. That becomes 2. 
Give the one we borrow from the three to the 10, then borrow from that, it becomes nine. Give the one we borrow from the 10 to the other zero, it becomes 10, then we borrow from that, it becomes nine, so on and so forth. Again, if you're confused by that, you can just go back to the class where we did uh, subtraction of decimals, and that'll review. So, let's see here. We started with three million, and we, we had a 0.19% decrease. So it went from 3 million to 2.9943 million. And we have to say million people. So that's the unit for that one. All right, let's see here. Make sure I did that correct. All right, so now on to 22. So all the problems that we just did were examples of your basic increase and decrease, excuse me, examples of your percent increase and percent decrease problems. If it was percent increase, you would just add. And if it were percent decrease, you would subtract. But we had to use our knowledge of how to find the percent of a number to do those problems. So. Now we're going on to percent uh, a, a, a different variation of, 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 the, of this problem, which is another application of order of operations. So we had n e equal to f plus or minus f times r, right? Depending on if it was uh, increase or decrease. So we were looking for this number, and we were given f and r. But in the next type of problem, we are given n, the number that, that after, after we do the decrease or increase, and we're given the percent, and then we're asked to find the original number. So we're actually looking for the original number in this one. So if all that seems really intimidating to you, that's okay. All you have to do is just recognize what the problem is asking, and that'll tell you which formula to use. Because once we know what formula to use, we can just plug the numbers in and then just calculate and we'll be done. So let's do number 22. If a number is decreased by 96% and the result is 30, what was the original number? So you can see this is a different problem from what we were doing before. You have to recognize that this is a different problem. We're going to be doing three types of these percent increase and percent decrease problems. We're going to be doing a problem where you're looking for the, 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 the number after we increase or decrease. You're going to be doing problems where you're looking for the original number, and you're going to be doing problems where you're looking for the percent that we increased or decreased. So we're on the second variation now, and the last variation, and the last thing we're doing in this class is finding the actual percent. So if a number is decreased by 96%, so we have R is 0.96, whoops, we have R is 0.96, and the result is 30, that's the number we get after we uh, decrease, then we get we find f so we're given n and we're given r so we just use the formula go ahead and write in the formula and this is a decrease so we're going to subtract r so n is 30 and r is 0.96 r must be written as a decimal or else the formula is not going to work so now, this is an example of order of operations again. So remember PEMDAS. Order of operations tells us to divide first, then subtract. But the parentheses is telling us that we're violating the order of operations. We're subtracting first because we do parentheses first, then we divide. So PEMDAS tells us parentheses first. So that means we do whatever's inside the parentheses first violating the order of operations agreement. So we have to do 1 minus 0.96. So you have to line up the decimals. You have to borrow. And you really don't really you don't really have to do that in your head because it's a pretty simple calculation. That's just like 100 minus 96 is 4 and just just make sure it's 0 0.04. So at that point, we get rid of the parentheses because we're done with all the operations inside the parentheses. And now we're ready to uh, divide. So 30 divided by 0 0.04. Now at this point, uh, we need to understand that we have not done division today. So we're going to have to review that a little bit here. 
But again, I, I know this seems like we're doing a lot today, but you've already done this stuff. So it shouldn't be that foreign to you. It's okay if you're a little bit rusty. That's that's fine. But if you don't if you don't have a clue of how to do if you don't recognize any of these operations, then that means there's a big problem. That means that you have not done the homework and you're in serious trouble. But if you recognize uh uh, the operations, if they're familiar to you, then you're you're fine. That means you've done the homework. Uh, if you're just list watching these classes and not doing the homework, then you're learning absolutely nothing. I guarantee you have to do every single homework problem, or at least 99% of the homework problems. But I shouldn't even tell you that because then you're gonna you're gonna start uh, skipping problems. Just do all the problems completely and correctly in every homework assignment. So now we do uh, 30 divided by 0 0.04. Now remember, the number farthest to the right, that's always the divisor. So that goes outside of the compartment. And 30 is the dividend. It goes inside. All right, so now we have to review how to de divide decimals. So you, for dividing decimals, you're just going to ignore these leading zeros, and you're going to ignore the decimal until the very end of the problem. So we figure out how many times 4 goes into 3. 4 does not go into 3. How many times does 4 go into 30? Well, 4 goes in, I know my multiplication fact, so I know it goes in 7 times. 7 goes above the last digit of the number you're dividing into. It does not go here. If you put it there, you're going to get the wrong answer. So we figure out how many times 4 goes in. That's the first step of the first cycle. Then we multiply 4 times 7. That's the second step of the first cycle. 4 times 7 is 28. Then we subtract 28 from 30, and we get 2. All right, so I know I did that kind of quickly, but 38, 30 minus 28, you really should be able to do that in your head. You can borrow from the 3 and, and give it to the, ten, the 0 and all that type of stuff, but you really don't need to. You can just do it in your head. So the first step was figure out how many times it goes in. Second step was multiply, 4 times 7, and then third step was subtract. Three steps to every cycle in division. Okay, so now uh, we have a remainder, so we have to keep going. So we add a decimal and a zero and bring that zero down. And then we start the whole process over again. But in this case, we're figuring out how many times four goes into the number down here. And we keep doing that over and over and over again until we have no remainder. So four goes into 20 five times exactly. And four times five is 20. And 20 minus 20 is zero. So again, th those are the three steps of the second cycle. Figure out how many times five goes in multiply 5 times 4, and then subtract 20 from 20. So at this point, I'm going to have to move all this stuff over, kind of cramped here. At this point, all we have to do is figure out where to put the decimal. So in case you forgot the rule, here's the rule. What you do is you look at the divisor, and you figure out how many places you have to move the decimal to get all the way to this line. And you can see we moved it two places. So that tells you to move this decimal here two places also, one, two, which means we have to put a, a placeholder zero. And then you bring it straight up. You don't bring it, you don't bring it up over here. You bring it straight up here, which means we need a placeholder zero there. So as you can see, lining up the numbers and writing all those placeholder zeros becomes extremely important because if you write 75 as your answer, you'll get the wrong answer. It's not 75, it's 750. And if I do write 75, I know that's ridiculous because um, let's see, what are, what are we doing in this problem? So we have to think about what the problem is talking about. So if we take a number and decrease it 96% and we get 30, um, that doesn't really make sense because uh, if we decrease uh, 75 by 96%, we should get a number that is much, much smaller than 30. But these problems are a little bit hard to conceptualize now that I think about it. But the answer is 750. So if you take 750 and decrease it by 96%, you're decreasing almost all of 750. It's almost going to zero. At least going compared to this big number, we're going all the way down to 30. But again, the important thing is you just have to know what type of what type of formula you need to use and then just plug in the numbers. So this stuff is pretty easy. The only hard part is figuring out what type of problem it is. Is it the basic increase or decrease problems we just did? 
where you use uh, n is equal to f plus or minus f times r? Or is it this type of problem where you're looking for the original number? Or is it the next type of problem we're going to do where you're looking for r? All right, let me rectangle that. Can't forget to rectangle that. Let's see here. So why don't you try 23? This is easy because you already know it's going to be one of these types of problems, right? Whoops, paper dis disappeared there. This is easy because you already know to use this formula. So all you have to do is just write that formula and plug in the numbers. So this is kind of cheating because you already know what formula to use. So attempt, attempt 23, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. F equals n divided by 1, and let's see, it's increase. So we know to write plus, and we have to write the 6% as a decimal. Whoop, I need to write the original formula first. n divided by 1 plus 0 0.06. Whoops, I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing. n is, uh, let's see here, n is 25.44. Um, all right, so now we just have to do the operation. So PEMDAS tells us to add first. So if you do all the calculations, we're running short on time, so I'm going to again do some of these calculations quickly. 1 plus 0 0.06 is just 1.06. So that's very easy. We do the parentheses first. Then we have to divide 25.44 by 1.06. Um, I just realized in this problem uh, we're dividing by a three-digit divisor, so we probably should have done this one together. If you got stuck there, that's okay. Um, it's not we haven't we haven't divided by a three-digit divisor yet. It's not that uh, the concept is difficult, but the calculations might be a little bit involved. So now we have to figure. We again you ignore the decimal. So we have to figure out how many times 106 goes into two. It doesn't go in at all. How many times is 106 going to 25? It doesn't go in at all. How many times is 106 going to 254? Now that goes in. I'm going to try two times. Now we could do 106 times 2 over here because we have to multiply in this in the second step of the first cycle. But we learned a quicker way to do it. We're going to do two. We're going to just keep the divisor here. So we're going to do two. Two times six is 12. Put the number, the two here, carry the one. Two times zero is zero. Two times, whoops. My program's going haywire here. Two times zero is zero, plus one is one. And two times one is two. And then we just subtract. 4 minus 2 is 2, 5 minus 1 is 4, bring the decimal, uh, oh, you don't need the decimal. Again, ignore the decimals when you're dividing. So we'll erase that in 1. And then we have to bring down the 4 and we start the cycle over again. How many times is 106 going to 424? The only difference is we're trying to figure out how many times it goes into this number as opposed to these numbers. So 106, uh, just waiting for my computer to... How many times is 106 going to 424? It actually goes four times exactly. And then four times six is 24. Carry the two, four times zero is zero, plus two is two, and four times one is four. Subtract, and you obviously get zero. So now we just have to figure out where the decimal goes. So, we figure out how many times we move the decimal in the divisor to get to this line. That's two places, so we move over two places, bring straight up, and we got 24. 
f equals 24. So that was a decrease problem. Or excuse me, that was an increase problem. So we, we increased from 24 to 25.44. We were just looking for the original number. All right, so why don't you try number 24. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So the original number equals n divided by 1 minus r because it's a decrease, so it has to be minus r. All right, let's see here. Make sure I'm using the right formula. And you just plug in the numbers. And again, we're running short on time. So 1 minus 17 is 0 0.83. 1 minus 0 0.17 is 0 0.83. So now we just have to do the division. And I'm not going to describe every single step of the division because, again, this class is starting to run long. I don't want to keep you too long here. So ignore the decimals. Ignore the leading zeros also. So how many times does 83 go into 2? does not go. How many times does it go into 24? does not go. But it does go into 249. It goes in exactly four times, I believe. Actually, no, it goes in three times. 140, remainder zero. So you move the decimal two places to get to this line. So you move two places and bring it straight up. You have to write a, a, a placeholder zero. So F is equal to 0 0.03. So if you got 0 0.03, good job. If you didn't, that's okay. Just figure out what you did wrong. So now we're going to do some word problems that apply that uh, formula. If a number uh, let's see here. Hmm. How many problems do we have left here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, we're, we're running short on time, so you can do these for homework if you want to. If you don't, you can just skip to the homework, but... Uh, we're running short on time, so we're going to have to just skip those problems and go on to uh, 28. Actually, we're going to have to skip way ahead here. So these are basically just the same types of problems that we just did. Um, I think you have enough to go on to uh, do those types of problems. So we're just going to move on to the third type of problem, and then we'll be done for the day. Um, type C percent change problems. Now we're going to find the percent. So on these problems, we're just looking for R. Again, in the first type of problem, we're looking for N. In the second type of problem, we're looking for F. And the third type of problem, we're actually looking for R, which is the percent written as a decimal. So we're looking for what percent change. All right, 31, if 80 is decreased to 30, what is the percent decrease? All right, so um, in this problem, we're not given the percent, so we need to find the percent. So R equals N, and I need to mention also that uh, if it's an increase, then um, this number goes first because it's going to be bigger. If it's a decrease, then uh, this number, um, it goes second, because we can't, we can't do negative numbers. So it's a, it, these two formulas are exactly the same. That's the important thing to understand. Those, those formulas are exactly the same. The only difference is you have to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number, or else you're going to get a negative. So if you were going if you were going from 30 to 80, the opposite direction, you just have to subtract this number from this or uh, uh, this number from this number. If you don't understand what's going on there, that's okay. We're going to do practice problems. So it's just always it's always just the bigger the, the the bigger number minus the smaller number, obviously. So R is equal to n minus f 
divided by f. So r is equal to 80 minus um, 30. Um, let's see. Let me think about this. We gotta figure out which formula we're using. So we're, act we're actually using the other formula, so I should change that around just so I don't confuse you. Again, it's the same formula, you just have to make sure that you're, um, make sure that you're subtracting the smaller number from the bigger number. All right, so we're taking the, we're, we're taking the change, we're subtracting the two numbers and then dividing by the original number. Notice that you always divide by the original number. The original number is the first number that's written. That's why I wrote f for first number. And that's and then once you get that number, you just change it to a percent, and then you're done. So these problems are going to be pretty easy. So PEMDAS tells us to uh, do the parentheses first. So we can easily subtract 8, 30 from 80. So that would just be 50. Again, you don't really have to do that on paper because it's so easy. So 50 divided by 80. Now we're going to use the long division algorithm for that. We can't divide 80 into 50. It doesn't go in. So you have to add a 0. 80 goes into 500. Let's see. Um, I'm going to say 6 times. 6 times 80 is 480. 500 minus 480 is 20. So we have a remainder, so we have to add a 0. Keep going. 80 goes into 200 2 times. 2 times 80 is 160. 160 minus, or 200 minus 160 is 40. Bring down a 0. 80 goes into 400 uh, five times. Eight times, or 80 times five is 400, so we have a remainder of zero. Now, in the divisor, the divisor is a whole number, so we do not have to move this decimal any places. We don't have to move it over. So we just bring it straight up. And R, which is the percent written as a decimal, is 0.625. So to find the percent, they're looking for percent decrease. Um, we have to move the decimal. We have to change the decimal to a percent. Now we haven't done that yet today. We've taken a percent and changed it to a decimal. You move it. You move the decimal two places to the left. But in this example, we're, we're going backwards. We're moving from a decimal to a percent. So you have to move it two places to the right. So it becomes 62.5 percent. And a lot of people are going to say, "Well, this is too much. Too much to remember." Well. I don't, know, I don't know what to tell you. This is the heart of all mathematics. What we've learned in this class encompasses pretty much all the, the basic operations. So you're going to have to learn this one way or the, or the other. You can't escape it. So, you know, there's no point in complaining about it. When you, when you add it all up uh, uh, and, and, and look at what, you're, what you have to remember, there's really not that much as far as algorithms to, to, to remember. It just seems like a lot because we're reviewing here. You might be a little rusty. All right, so... Why don't you try uh, number 50, number 32, and when you come back, we'll do that one together. Again, it's always the bigger number minus the smaller number, and then divided by the original number. So before you attempt that problem, uh, let me just write the formula for you. So that would be uh, r is equal to, um, let's see, it's an increase, so it's going to be n minus f divided by f. So go ahead and attempt that problem, when you, and when you're done, we'll come back and do it together. All right, we're back. r is equal to 31 minus 15 divided by 15. 31 minus 15 is really easy. That would just be 16. And we have... 16 divided by 15. So remember, the number that goes to the right is always the divisor. That always goes outside the compartment. 16 divided by 15. So we add the 15. Well, actually, 15 does go into, it doesn't go into 1, but it does go into 16 one time. 15 times 1 is 15. Subtract and you get 1. We have a remainder, so we have to add a decimal and a 0. Bring it down. We have 10. So after we brought down the, the number, 
we still 15 still cannot go into to 10 so we have to bring down another or excuse me we have to write a zero so after we brought down down the number 15 still doesn't go into 10 so we have to put a zero up here remember that then we bring down another zero and 15 goes into a hundred I believe six times six times 15 is 90 and I'm doing a lot of this in my head but again you can just use the fast way to multiply without having to write the the numbers vertically 100 minus 90 is 10 okay then you bring down a zero and uh, let's see I just want to make sure I did that correctly I think I did 15 goes into 100 six times 15 times 6 is 90 bring down okay subtract we get 10 bring down another zero and you're gonna, you're gonna see this is just gonna keep going on and on and on and on six 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 so R is going to be and the decimal again this is the divisor is a whole number so we don't have to move this decimal over at all we just move it straight up and we get 1.06 and the six keep going on forever so we put a bar all right but we want to change this to a decimal so we have to move or excuse me we have to we want to change it to a percent in the previous problems we changed from a, a decimal percent to a decimal but in, th in this problem we have to go to the opposite direction so we have to move it two places to the right so it becomes 106.6 .6, and these sixes just keep going on and on so we put the bar here we don't put the bar over that six because that's a whole number and then you always have to write percent all right so in the previous problem it was 62.5 percent decrease and this problem it's 106.6 .6 bar percent increase so why don't you try number 30 and when you come back we'll do it together all right we're back so this is an increase so we use the same formula we used in the previous problem always write the formula that you that you're using and we have 44 minus 40 divided by 40 44 minus 40 is 4 4 divided by 40 40 doesn't go into 4 so you have to add a 0 and 40 goes into 40 one time 1 times 40 is 40 the remainder is 0 bring the decimal straight up because you don't have to move it over so we have r equals 0 0.1 and then we change that to percent you go one two places over so it becomes 10 percent so if you got 10 percent good job it was a 10 percent increase so at this point um, we're starting to run out of time so I'm going to skip that problem there and we're just going to go to uh, some of the word problems so you can get an idea of how these work in word problems after modifying his recipe after modifying his recipe, a chef's cookies were reduced in volume from 0.5 ounces to 0.1 ounces. What is the percent decrease of these cookies? So it's a percent decrease. So you have to use this formula here. And again, they're all the same formula. You just have to figure out which number is bigger. These two formulas are the same. So 0 0.5, because that's the first number. Divided by F, which is the first number again. And I'm going to do a lot of this in my head. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1, that's pretty easy. You can just do that in your head. It's 0 0.4. And then 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.5. 5 does not go into 4, so you add a 0. 5 goes into 40 eight, 8 times. 5 times 8 is 40, remainder 0. Now in this case, the divisor is a decimal. So we have to move the decimal over one place to get to this line. So we have to move this decimal over one place and bring it straight up. So R is equal to 0 0.8. Now that's not our answer. That's the percent written as a decimal. We have to move it over two places, and it becomes 80%. So it's an 80% uh, decrease in the uh, volume of the chef's cookies. Food is usually measured in, in ounces, but ounces is really a unit of volume. I know it's typically not, not thought of as volume, but that's what it is. 
All right, Jared increased the area of his posters from 5.5 square feet to 6 square feet. Calculate the percent increase of the area of the posters. So why don't you attempt this problem, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So it's an increase, so we have to use n minus f. n minus f divided by f. And again, I'm going kind of quick here because uh, this this class is starting to reach uh, two hours here, so I don't want to I don't want to tire you out today. I'm proud of you for getting this far. This is a lot of work, but remember, this class is this co this entire course is starting to come to an end, so the 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 light is at the end of the tunnel. We see the light. All right. So again, I'm going to skip over a little bit here because we've already done these operations about you know 50 times today 6 minus 5.5 .5 is just 0 0.5 again you can do the operation if you want on paper but we're running out of time so so now uh, 0 0.5 divided by 5.5 so 55 does not go into 5 so we have to add a 0 but it still doesn't go in so we have to add another 0 55 goes into 500 let's see um, I think it goes in. Uh, uh, I think it goes in nine times. Nine times five is forty-five. Carry the four. Nine times five is forty-five. Plus four is forty-nine. And we have five hundred minus four hundred ninety-five, which is five. I know I'm doing that quickly, but we have to get going here. Then we bring down a, zer a zero. And after we after we bring down the zero, fifty-five still doesn't go in to fifty. So you know what we have to do? We have to add a zero because it still doesn't go in. Then we have to bring down another zero and we have 500. And we already know that 55 goes into 500 nine times, so we know it's just gonna be nine. Multiply again, we're gonna get the same number. And as you can see, it's just gonna keep going on and on. You're just gonna get zero, nine, zero, nine, zero, nine. Now, it's extremely important to know where to put the decimal. We have to look at the divisor to know where to put the decimal. So the divisor tells us to move one place over, excuse me, one place over to get to this line. So we have to move this decimal one place over, bring it straight up, and then we have to put a placeholder zero there. We can't just have blank spaces here. So now R is equal to 0 0.09, and the 0 0.09 is barred. So we and to, 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 so that's the percent written as a decimal, but we have to move it two places over, so we get 9.09 and the bar is going to be on the 0, 09. It cannot be on this number because that's a whole number. It can't be there. So the increase was 9.09 percent increase in the square feet of the the posters. Alright, so I'm really proud of you for getting through all that stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Most people who are taking this class are going to be young people, so if you got through all that stuff, that was good. If you're complaining about how uh, long this course was, just remember that you only have to do two classes per week. So I don't want to hear too much complaining about that. It's only two classes per week. So I know that's a lot of work, but uh, yeah, uh, you got to do a certain amount of math to go through the academic system. If you want to stay in the academic system, that's your choice, but you got to do the math. Math is more important than any other subject uh, because it has the most potential to prevent you from going forward. So now we have the homework here. So go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Go ahead and take a screenshot of that. And as you can see, we have all the answers. Do the homework completely and correctly on a separate piece of paper. And uh, show all your work. Remember to check all your answers. If you don't get the right, right answer, you just wasted your time. You have to check all your answers. So uh, that was class 24. And I look forward to seeing you in class 25.